This is an introduction to MATLAB. It's assuming that you have found MATLAB, uh, found access to MATLAB on your computer or on a computer on campus. Realize that I am doing this on a computer, on a Mac computer, which means what you see might be slightly different if you're using a Windows machine, but it won't be that different. So when you first open up MATLAB, you'll have a few screens. Typically, you'll have the command window and also your folder list on the left-hand side, and then other windows. These, these can be moved around. I'm just going to leave them as they are right now, and we'll, we'll do some basics. So one thing that MATLAB can do is just act as a calculator. So in the command window, you can type something terribly complex and see an answer. There's a very useful command that you'll see soon uh, called using the semicolon, and if I do the same thing and then type a semicolon after, you see that it doesn't show the answer. This is called suppressing the output. So a semicolon suppresses the output. We can also define variables in the command window, so I could say something like x equals 1, look, x equals 1, uh, or I could say similarly x equals 1 with a semicolon and it won't show the output. So you can use this, the command window for simple things like that. But as soon as anything gets more complicated than just being a calculator, you want to have another way to enter your commands and keep them as a script, what we'll call a script or an M file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new script by going to New. And in my case, it's called a script. It might be called an M file on Windows. And it's the, it's the default new thing. So here I'm just, I've got an editor window. And I'm going to start by naming my file. Now, in, to make com uh, comments, you use the percent sign. So I'm going to call my file Fresnel.m. This is not actually naming it anything, I'm just commenting. Now I'm going to put my name in there, and I'll also put the date. Uh, what is the date? The cat is about to start talking. And now is a good time to go ahead and save it. So I'll do save. I want to save it into a particular folder. It'll probably default to something like MATLAB. I want to know where it's being saved. And in this case, I've got a folder that is called optics for my optics classwork. Oh, look, there's another file called Fresnel. Well, we'll name it something different then. Fresnel homework. And that'll save with the .m extension. So I'll just hit, that's in the optics folder. Just uh, hit that. And I'm going to change the name here now because this is a good way to know what file you're calling. So every time you make a change, you can save. And what the script does is allows me to run a bunch of commands all at once and repeat them and make changes, etc. So let me show you an example. We'll start building the file that is actually going to be useful to you. And for example, we're going to need to know our uh, variables. So I'm going to say define indices of refraction. And we'll call an ni. I put spaces in there, but it's not necessary. I just like the way it looks. Let's say ni equals 1, suppress output, and t equals 1.5, suppress output, and there we go. So I'm going to save this, and I usually save just using command s. And now what I want to do is run it. So I'd like to be able to run it from either the command window or from the editor window. I'm going to double click on the folder that that editor that that um, file is in and now I'm acting in this this uh, in this folder. So this is getting a little bit confusing by now. What I'd like you to get an idea of now is how to run this little m file. So there's two ways I can do it. One, I can hit this little arrow here, the little green arrow, and it says run Fresnel homework.m. And what appeared in the command window was simply the name of the script and it ran the commands. Let's add something else interesting in here just uh, 
so that we can see that it's done something. So I'll add some fake little command. I'm going to run this again. Now you can see that it has done the script and calculated that answer. Let's delete this now because we don't need that. Another way I can run the script is by going to my command window and typing Fresnel underscore homework. It is um, capital, it is case sensitive, and I can hit return. Uh, it didn't register that I had made changes, that's why it, uh, here, let's go back to the command window, run it again, I just saved the file. Instead of retyping the whole thing, I can hit the up arrow and it will repeat the command. All right, so two ways you can run a script. One is by typing the script name in the command window, and the other is by sitting in your editor window and pressing this arrow, which runs it. Let's go on and do some more definitions. That's most of the intro to MATLAB that you'll need to know in order to function in MATLAB. Let's, let's learn a little bit more. So the first thing we're going to want to do for our homework is define a theta i array, incident angle array. And notice that I use comments a lot. I highly recommend this so that I know what each step is about. So I'm just going to call this theta i. And an easy way to define an array is to give the starting value, the step size, so let's make our step size 0 0.05. You might decide that's not enough, might be good. And then the end value, we're going to go to pi over 2. I'm going to suppress the output, and there we go. That defines an array from 0 to pi over 2 in steps of 0 0.05. Five. You don't have to do this much commenting, that is just for your sake as the watcher. All right, great. We now have our, our theta i array, and we're going to do things with theta i. Now you might wonder with the Fresnel equations how you can plug in some values, and the answer is that we know what the transmitted angle is also. So in the next step, let's calculate the transmitted angle, theta t. And we'll do that by entering a command as a function. So theta t equals the value of theta t, which is inverse sine of ni over nt. Um, so I'll do that this in sequence. ni divided by nt times sine of theta i, end parentheses, end parentheses. There's our theta t. Hopefully that'll work, but the reason we run our scripts is to test them and see if, see if it's the right thing. So what I've just done is I've applied Snell's law to calculate the transmitted angle. Okay. Now, what do we want to do with that? What you're going to do is you're going to actually plot things, and you're going to plot, you're going to calculate and plot the Fresnel reflection and transmission coefficient. So your next line that you will fit in might be something like calculate reflection and transmission coefficients. And you'll notice I've given you some syntax information, like to multiply you need the little star symbol, and to divide you just use the line, and of course use standard order of operations and the uh, and parentheses as necessary. So you're going to fill in there, but let's let's do a plot just by plotting theta t versus theta i. That should be kind of fun. So let's plot something. In this case, theta t versus theta i. But the plot, what you plot is not actually, this is just an example of plotting. This is not what you will be plotting. Okay, so we're going to use the plot command. Yeah, we'll start with saying figure. So let's open figure one. And then we'll use the plot command. When you plot, you'll notice this gives you a helpful list of what's going to go in your plot. You put your x array, then your y array, 
and then the other things that you want to add. So you plot, in this case, the x array is theta i, the y array is theta t, and we're going to give it a little bit of description. We're going to say, let's make our plot in little x's. All right, we're going to run this and see if it actually works. I'm going to hit this arrow here. We want to plot theta t versus theta i, and there it is. All right, so that's figure one, and that's a plot of theta t versus theta i. If I want to label my axes, I'm pretty sure this is right, I do something like x label theta i, and y label theta t, and let's run that again. Now you can see that the labels have been added, x and y labels. Okay, so that's a start on how to plot. MATLAB is quite helpful with the help command, and if I want to learn more about plot, a quick way to get some help is to type help plot. Hit return, and I get a whole lot of information about plotting, what kinds of choices I've got, what colors, etc. Let's apply one of these helpful comments or helpful pieces of information and change the color of our plot. Go back to our, uh, our editing window and now I'm going to make the X's instead of the default, I'll make them red. All right, there we go, we've got red X's. Okay, so next, there's one more thing that you're going to need to know before you can do this without having errors. So when you divide an array by another array, let's put this down here, you're going to learn about dividing arrays. What we want to do is multiply point by point, value by value, not the whole array times the whole array. So we're dealing with vector multiplication or array multiplication. And we use a special, uh, sim we just use a dot in front of the command. I'll show you an example. Let's make a test function. And we'll call test the division of two arrays. In this case, let's just do something simple. Let's do theta t divided by theta i. So instead of just having a divide symbol, I'm going to do dot divide. Okay, and I'm not going to suppress the output so we can see what happens when we don't suppress the output. Let's see what this runs as. There we go. If we look at our command window here, you can see it couldn't do 0 divided by 0, but then it gave me values for that, uh, the division of theta t by theta i. I can also, by the way, just go up to my window here and go to the editor, I believe. All right, so dividing or multiplying arrays, what you need to do is put a dot in front of divide or multiply command. So this is pretty much the end of what you need to do to plot the Fresnel reflection and transmission coefficients. One more thing. Let's do a couple plots. You've got, you're, you're actually going to want to plot more than one line on the same axis. So we're going to stay with our figure one. Uh, now let's do, let's do something different. Okay. I'm going to copy this and reproduce it down here. And now let's open up figure two for this command and we're going to plot two things at once. So we've got our x value, our y value, and our descriptive uh, labels. And then we're going to plot another plot, theta i, comma, test, our new function, comma, let's make them blue x's now. Now let's do blue circles, just for variety. All right, and our x label is still theta i, our y label has other things happening. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so there's our plot with two plots on the same axis. 
are on the same plot. And you can see again that we did that by listing x comma y comma descriptors and then x comma y comma descriptors. So you can continue that with more plots. You will end up with four plots on the same axes and you want them all to have different colors uh, or different symbols so we can tell the difference. You'll see that there's also more information about um, how to label the uh, a legend, etc. So that'll come up when you do help plot. And there we go. We've made a couple of lovely plots and you can now start with the same script if you were building it as you went along with your own name of course and add to it. Try plotting some new things and you should see the reflection and transmission coefficients which tells you all about how much light is being reflected and transmitted at a particular interface given the NI and NT values. Okay, so we're going to stop there.